Hello there! Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be creating this Nautilus shell with polymer clay and painting it with acrylic paints. It's a really fun project, so let's get into it. To do this project, we'll be using a 30 by 30 centimetre painting board, a palette and a gallery series brush set. For paint, we'll be using titanium white, lamp black, burnt sienna, burnt umber all in satin series acrylic and pearl white in dimension acrylic. For clay, we'll be using a 400 gram block of white polymer clay. A drill, some aluminium foil, a coat hanger, sandpaper, tape, two long screws and four short screws, a 6B graphite pencil, modelling clay tool for smoothing, a hobby knife, some pliers, a screwdriver and some scissors. For guidance, you can find this on our website along with a step-by-step -step guide. The first step is to pop a round head small screw in each corner. We put these in as the armature is held in from behind the board through holes. So this just provides some space so the board will sit flat on the table. Use the outline page and cut the sheet to size so that it fits inside the frame. Shade the back side, flip the sheet over and centralise the printout inside the panel. Transfer the outline by retracing the line work with a pencil. Drill the two holes with a 3mm drill bit. Next, lay out the outline guidance sheet and bend the coat hanger to the profile of the outline. Mark the position of where each wire meets the base with a pencil and bend the wire with pliers at that point to 90 degrees and then snip the wire to a length of 30 millimetres from the bend point. Roll out a roll of aluminium foil and fold it over itself six times. We can then fold it over the coat hanger and reshape it so that it forms a compound convex shape. Once we are happy with that shape, we can cut off the excess. We then create another ball of aluminium foil and fit it to the underside of the shell under the first sheet and knock it into shape. Once we are happy with the shape, we fix a couple of 30 mm screws through the ball of clay into the base. This is pretty important because if it is to be hung on the wall when finished, it will ensure that it is securely fixed and won't move. Wrap some tape around the aluminium foil along the base to bind them together. With this, our armature is finished and we can add some clay. To add the clay, it needs to be rolled into sheets so we can lay it over the armature. I'm using a Montmartre clay press on the larger setting, which will give me a clay sheet thickness of six millimetres. If you do not have a clay press, you can place the clay between two sheets of aluminium foil and roll it out with a rolling pin to the desired thickness. Join the sheets together and wrap the sheet around the outfoil from the opening of the shell on the inside and the outside. Polymer clay is quite sticky, so it will adhere to the underside of the shell nicely. It's a good idea to support the underside of the clay in the opening of the shell with your hand while you press the top layer of clay on. Press the clay together so there are no pockets of air between the alfoil and the clay. Then cut away the excess clay to the shape on the outside profile of the shell and then on the inside. Add more clay over the existing aluminium foil ball in the mouth and then blend this into the clay already down. Then cut away the excess. Smooth out the clay and then bake it following the instructions on the packaging. In this case, I bake it for 30 minutes at a temperature of 130 degrees Celsius or 266 degrees Fahrenheit. This will be the first baking. Once the sculpture is removed, let it cool. We can then add bits of clay onto any uneven areas on the surface. At this stage, I refine the central area of the shell so there is a smooth transition from the large part of the shell around into the small part of the shell 
inside the mouth. Do a final smoothing of the surface and then give the sculpture a second bake. Remove the sculpture and allow it to cool. Once cool, give the sculpture a sand to level out any uneven spots and rough patches. Remove the dust and we can start painting. Squeeze out some titanium white and burnt sienna and create a sort of orange beige and paint this over the whole shell. Then allow this to dry. Next, we create those stripes with pure burnt sienna and a touch of burnt umber with water added to the mix so it flows smoothly. When the stripes are laid on, start at the base of the shell and thin the stripes out as they move to the center of the shell. As I lay down these stripes, I pay close attention to the second printout in the lesson plan and try to make them look as authentic as possible. The stripes on each Nautilus are unique to each animal, but they still follow a similar pattern. Once the stripes are on, they are allowed to dry. Because burnt sienna is a semi-opaque colour, a second thin layer needs to be laid over the stripes. I do this and allow them to dry. A watery mix of burnt umber is scrubbed on to tint the central area of the shell. Then titanium white can be laid in in between the stripes. Fade the paint out the closer you get to the centre of the shell. Lamp black is then painted into the area under the central point of the shell and allowed to dry. Squeeze out some pearl white and paint this over the black. Allow this to dry and give it a second coat. Our Nautilus is essentially complete and we can move on to the base. And the first thing is to paint lamp black carefully around the shell up to each wood bar. Use a large flat brush and add a little water to help it flow smoothly. The last step is to create a very watery mix of burnt umber to emulate the look of a stain. Lay this on and if you can't see the grain, add more water to the mix. Well, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this lesson. Stay tuned, stay creative and we'll see you soon.